Do you want to become an illustrator? These are the five things you need to do before even touching a pencil. According to artist and writer Lisa Congdon, we all begin our creative journeys with some kind of initial influence. She calls this first point of discovery a spark. Maybe you've just had that spark in discovering illustration and now you're wondering what next? With so many books, videos, classes, and such to turn to, where is the best place to start? The good news is, of course, that there have never been more resources available, most of which are free, for those who want to get started in illustration. On the other hand, so many of the resources that seem to be for beginners don't really start at the beginning. There's just so much that beginners don't know that even stuff that seems simple to people like me can sound like white noise. If you feel like an absolute beginner, I made this video for you. But don't leave just yet if you're more experienced. Sometimes it's helpful to go right back to the beginning ourselves, I include myself in this, to be reminded of the spark we once had and may have lost. Perhaps you're feeling a bit disconnected from the reason you got into this in the first place. This video can hopefully provide some ways to rekindle that spark and help you reconnect with your work. As I was writing for this episode, I was going to give some advice for what to learn first if you want to get into illustration. While I think what to learn is a great topic, I think there's a gap between that first spark that I mentioned, that first spark of inspiration, and then setting out to learn how to illustrate. I think this gap usually gets overlooked and I think a lot of how to get started guides and videos assume you already have some minimal artistic background or already have some well-formulated ideas and questions about commercial illustration. Just peeking into a few intro to illustration type books I have on my shelf, I see terms like clients, business plan, pricing, portfolio, and I believe these can seem too advanced as topics for the very beginner. If you've only just discovered illustration, you're probably pretty much at the very beginning, the absolute zero, and you just don't know what you don't know. In this video, I want to share with you the stuff that you need to know even before you know what to ask. These will take that initial spark of discovery that brought you here and help you turn it into fire. If you're just joining up with us now, my name's Tom Froze. I'm an award-winning illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare, where I've helped tens of thousands of students unlock the world of illustration. It took me years of trial and error to figure out how to illustrate for a living, and now I want to share what I've learned with you. This channel is all about giving you insights and inspiration that will help you become a successful commercial illustrator. If you're at the very beginning of that journey, thank you for watching. I'm glad to be a part of it. As always, please be sure to like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to this channel so you can be the first to know when new videos go up. My posting schedule can be a little bit unpredictable, so hitting subscribe and hitting that little bell button will ensure that you get notified as soon as I post each video. Okay, let's get into it. Here are five next steps that you should take if you've just discovered illustration and want to learn more about it. So the first tip is find inspiration. Find what inspires you. When you're just getting started, there's nothing better than to get inspired. You've already found that spark, that thing that made you want to learn more about illustration, or at least I assume that's why you're here. So now's the time to keep the party going. The good news is that this is one of the most fun parts of learning about illustration. You just start gathering what inspires you. And a great place to start is actually Pinterest because it's pretty much purpose built for this very task. Make a board called Illustration or Illustration I Love and begin pinning. You'll no doubt go down a rabbit hole here and I think that's a good thing. Sometimes I go to Pinterest in the morning before I start my work day and it fuels me up and gets me excited just seeing all the color and shapes that show up. I did this a ton when I was starting out, and now that I'm thinking about it, I wanna start making that a more regular part of my workflow again. Other sources of inspiration, of course, are Instagram. I recommend just following the illustration tag or similar, 
and use the bookmark or save to feature, the little bookmark icon in the lower right corner of the image when you find something you love. You can save it there and always reference, return to it later. Books and magazines are also a great way to uh, get inspired. When you get a chance, go to a bookstore or library and peruse their art and design sections, as well as their magazine racks. I love the element of chance you get when you walk into a physical space and you just kind of get what you get. For books and magazines, I'd actually recommend finding ones that showcase various artists and their work rather than a how-to book. Before you have questions about how to do illustration, you should first just be flooding your senses with any and all illustration and letting questions occur more organically. A great start is a book like 50 Years of Illustration by Lawrence Zegan and Caroline Roberts, which walks you through a pictorial history of illustration over the past half century. For magazines, try Communication Arts Illustration Annual or 3x3 Magazine. I've listed links to these books and magazines in the video description below. The takeaway for this first tip is this. The first job for a newborn is to feed on its mother's milk. I'm going somewhere with this, so bear with me. You are an illustration newborn and your milk is the inspiration other illustrators have left behind. Okay, it's kind of a gross metaphor, so let's move on. Just be sure to collect your inspiration on Pinterest boards or by using the Save To feature in Instagram. And of course, following inspiring artists wherever they post and share. If you want, you can even make a folder on your hard drive and save images you find there. Okay, the second tip is to find your heroes. Find the people who are making the work that you love. This is the logical next step from finding inspiration. As you seek out and gather inspiration, you're going to find images that you are more drawn to than others. Or perhaps you'll discover a pattern in the kind of illustration you like perhaps that from a certain era or a certain style. Make note of that and then find out who made the images. Find more work from these people. Follow them on all their social media accounts. Stalk them. Okay, don't stalk them, I'm, I'm joking. But don't forget to also go to their website if they have one. Read their bios. Find out who their influences are. Find out the names of the techniques and tools they use, such as gouache or vector art, and I'll talk more about this in a bit, and then look those up. I'm gonna say look things up a lot in this video because that's what you do when you're a newborn, when you're on a mission to learn what you don't know. For me at some point early on, I can't remember exactly when, I discovered the grandfather of modern American graphic design, Paul Rand. He designed the IBM logo, the original UPS logo, and he even did some work for Apple founder Steve Jobs. Paul Rand was a picture book illustrator, an ad man, a branding designer. He was amazing. Since finding out about him, I've referenced him in my own work, very imitatively at first actually, and I've learned so much by reading his books and studying his work. It's just as important to find heroes from the past as it is to find ones from the present. Find heroes from the past, like Paul Rand in my case, who connect you to the long-standing traditions of our field, and you'll learn that there are timeless principles that they relied on that we will also need to rely on today. Of course, we can't stay stuck in the past. We need to breathe a sense of nowness in our work as well. So finding heroes from the present day will connect us to what is happening now in this field. Finding heroes from the present day will connect us to what is happening now in illustration, and they can guide you through some of the day's most pressing issues faced by the illustration industry. One last thought on this before I move on. Marketing guru Seth Godin talks about mentors versus heroes. In an ideal world, we'd all have personal mentors who care deeply and personally about us, who could guide us exactly where we're at. But they're expensive and rare. Instead, he encourages people to find heroes, leaders whom we can easily find online or in books and emulate. He reminds us not to use the absence of mentors as an excuse for inaction. Rather, he literally suggests that the majority of us will not get to have a mentor and we're going to have to settle for or make do with heroes, the people we may never meet 
but who can still have a tremendous influence in our lives and our work. I've personally had many minor mentors, I suppose, like teachers or employers, but my most profound influences come from my heroes, dead, distant, and otherwise totally unaware that I exist. Okay, the third tip is to study the market. Okay, this is admittedly where we start getting a little more advanced in our language. The word market suddenly sounds super businessy and kind of antithetical to making art. Well, I believe knowing what illustration is and how it can be used before setting out to actually learn how to do it can save you a ton of time. This helps you formulate better questions. Illustration is a market. It's a skill that you learn and then you use to solve problems for people and businesses and you get paid to do this. That's the whole point of being a commercial illustrator. But just like there are pediatricians and ophthalmologists and oncologists in the doctor world, there are many different specializations of illustrators and many different applications for what we do. Looking now at your heroes and inspiration, what markets do they work in? What sort of applications do they seem to focus on? Does the kind of illustration you're most in love with mostly exist within one market? Just for a few examples of applications and markets, we have publishing, which includes books, advertising, we have editorial with magazines and newspapers as subcategories, and greeting cards, which is kind of more broadly speaking, licensing. So you're making patterns and other images that you can sell to people who will use them on actual products. Within each of these are further subcategories or niches. My point here is not to overwhelm you, but to shed light on the fact that illustration is not just a one dimensional thing. It's an entire universe. When you can identify the part of this universe that sings most to your heart, you can focus in on it and actually feel like you're getting somewhere. I think it was Casey Neistat who has a talk about focus where you can do 10 different things to the first degree or one thing to the 10th degree. That means you can try building many different houses at once, try and do a lot of things, have a lot of burners, never completing any one of them, or just build one house and get it done. Well, I know this is a bit of a tangent. My point is that studying the illustration market not only makes you more knowledgeable about illustration, it gives you more clarity about where you fit in the illustration universe. And most importantly, at this chaotic big bang beginning where you're at, it helps you know what to focus on. Okay, tip number four is research illustration techniques. Research illustration techniques. I know that in this video, I've said I want to address the gap between the spark of discovering illustration and starting to actually learn how to do it, but I'm not yet talking about how to use illustration techniques or tools, but simply what illustration techniques are out there in a broad and general sense. Just starting to learn the names of these things can set you off asking more specific questions that can guide you to more understanding. What are the processes, the tools, the techniques, the materials, and so on that go into illustration? Maybe after finding out, you might find out that you don't wanna be an, an illustrator at all. I once thought I wanted to be a computer engineer, and it wasn't until I was sitting in my first class when I got a real sense of what the world I was getting into was like at the time, and I realized it wasn't at all for me. Maybe if I had taken a closer look at the tools I would be working with as an engineer, I would have been able to determine earlier on whether I had any love for the trade. I know tools are just a part of being an engineer or an illustrator, but these become extensions of our bodies. And I think there's an initial attraction to the physical tools and techniques that become a clue into whether we love the world of which these things are a part. Today, most illustration is done digitally using programs like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop or Procreate on the iPad, but many still choose to stick to traditional physical media like painting and drawing. 
At this early stage, you don't have to learn anything. You don't have to commit to anything. You don't even have to lift a pencil. But I encourage you to learn as much as you can now about the tools and techniques, both digital and analog, that practicing illustrators use today. Personally, I think many illustrators get into this because of the tools and supplies at first. I still get excited thinking about going to art supply stores. There's just something in the atmosphere there. There's something in just seeing the, the hard material things that we use that just really gets me back to that place where I first started learning about illustration and wanting to get my hands dirty. I also remember being super nerdy about learning all the computer stuff way back. I would have done anything to have had access to the kind of equipment I have today. Even most people who aren't even illustrating today have way more cool equipment that you can use for illustration than I had just 10, 15 years ago. Everyone comes into illustration with a certain kind of tool and technique that draws them in. Some people will love working with watercolor on that lush textured paper. Others will find pleasure in the way a pencil scratches paper. Others yet will find that their heart leaps when they see the Adobe Illustrator splash screen to each their own. The best way to research illustration techniques, of course, is just to look them up. And there it is again, look it up. First, find out the names of techniques and you can follow the trail of clues left by your heroes in illustration. That means find out what they used. Then when you're ready, get your hands on some and try it yourself. I know I said you don't have to lift a pencil, but I know that you're not gonna be able to help yourself once you start reading about these things. Yes, get out to an art store, spend a little on some things to play around with, and just have some fun. One final note about learning about tools and technique. If you really want to get nerdy, I recommend buying or borrowing a book about design or illustration history, where quite often you'll find how the technology tools and techniques of each era profoundly influenced the work of artists of that time. I personally have Meg's History of Graphic Design, but there are of course many other titles to choose from. I recently discovered History of Illustration by Susan Doyle, which looks amazing, but is flabbergastingly expensive to buy. I can't find it for less than around $180 hardcover and $120 US for paperback. As always, and very fortunately, of course, most resources to get you started can be looked up for free online or borrowed at your local library. Now, of course, we are in a pandemic right now, but when things start to lift and you can go to the library, that will be available to you. To give you guys a head start, I'll leave a couple book suggestions in the description below. Please use these links if you can, which will give me a little bit of kickback, which is a small favor back for making you this video. My last tip for what to do next when starting to learn about illustration is to keep a journal. Go out and buy a nice notebook or sketchbook and commit to writing about your journey regularly. I've been doing this for almost as long as I've been able to write. Not writing about illustration per se, but just writing my thoughts. So I'll admit this does come easy and more natural for me than it might for a lot of you. But let me just say, today I have a banker's box full of journals that I've written just from the last decade. And at the beginning of this period, I was still on the outside looking in, dreaming, pining to become an artist for a living, trying to figure out how do I make this work. Honestly, there are more pages than I ever care to read again in this banker's box about my longing and pining to become an illustrator. But sometimes I dip in and read a bit just to sort of remember the good old days of despairing about my future. The most important thing though, is not that I recorded them for my future self, but just in the act of writing out my dreams, my thoughts, my struggles, my failures, my successes, I was able to put extra focus on my pursuit. I remember many times when I was anxious and unable to sleep, I would open my notebook and just start listing and naming things I was struggling with or trying to work out and this was very important in my growth and development as an artist and individual. 
If anything, writing gives you an opportunity to put your intentions out there into the universe in a physical way. And at the risk of sounding really woo woo, I believe that doing this works. When we speak our intentions out loud into the air or onto the page, things happen. In my personal journaling life, I have journal entries from even further back from almost 20 years ago when I first started getting a sense that I wanted to pursue more art in my life. Imagine my journey to being a commercial illustrator today started two decades ago and much of that started by being recorded in red pen on lined paper in a dollar store notebook. What can I say? The journey can be very long and winding, but if you don't start taking steps now, you'll never get very far. Hopefully these tips will be your guide as you start filling in that first gap between that spark of inspiration that got you excited about illustration and creativity at first, and your first actual steps toward education, becoming skilled as a creative professional, a commercial illustrator. So before we close guys, I just wanna hear from you. What part of the journey are you on? Are you in that gap, that gap between just being inspired and that point where you actually start filling in your knowledge with education? If you're just starting out, what are your biggest questions right now? If you're further along, what sort of advice would you give those just starting out? I'd love to know in the comments below. Okay guys, as usual, if you found these starting points helpful, please let me know by hitting that like button. Okay, I have one final bonus tip, and that is to move forward from here with an open mind and an appetite for learning. The end of the journey is going to look a lot different than the beginning, and that's a good thing. There's no point in an adventure that ends where you started. There's no point in growing if you're going to stay the same size. It's complete nonsense. When I started out, I thought I was going to become a graphic designer. Even before that, I thought I was gonna be a computer engineer. The thing that has been my constant, which has guided me and has been with me all the way through has been my curiosity, my hunger for learning, and my passion for creativity. Asking questions and working out the answers with my hands has and continues to be the driving force behind my growth as a creative. Once you've started to fill in your gap and you feel ready to start learning more about how to illustrate, I have a growing number of illustration classes on Skillshare. My latest class, Sweet Spots, teaches one of the most basic kinds of editorial illustration. It's gained over 10,000 students since it launched in February of this year, so that's about three months ago. I recommend checking out the student projects page to be blown away by their amazing creative illustrations. I'll leave a link in the show notes that will get you started with two free months of premium Skillshare membership. Folks often ask me about what tools and techniques I use. Sweet Spots is a great way to peek into my process and get you asking more of those questions about the world of illustration. All right, guys, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep asking great questions and working them out in your art.